All right, guys, good old boy 32 here. Check it out. Uh, what I want to talk to you guys about today is the Primary Arms SLX 8. This is the 1 to 8 by 24. Now, this is their Raptor version, and this thing is a first focal plane scope. Uh, I did a field test with this thing, and I absolutely love it. I will tell you this I run the 1 to 8 Platinum on my competition rifle, and uh, for three gun and that thing is just dead nuts out to 600 yards with 77 grain a 16 inch barrel one and eight twist it's it's fail safe if it's a target out there uh, out to four or five hundred yards i don't have to worry about it all i gotta do is line it up with the radical and it is a go now that platinum is about twelve hundred thirteen hundred dollars this guy right here kind of bridges the gap between their one to six and the platinum this is they're one to eight in a kind of a more uh, regular size body, but it is absolutely incredible in that it is first focal plane. And what does that mean? It means that you can actually shrink the reticle down. I'm going to put some video parts in here so you can see. You can shrink the reticle down to a red dot. Now we were talking about this the other night on a chat. Uh, what what is the best optic out there? Is it a red dot? Is it a low power variable optic? Uh, is it a, a prism scope like this one? This is the Cyclops. And the cool thing about the Cyclops is that the diopter is adjustable. And for me, old eyes screwed up. If I'm running a red dot, I'm going to run one of these things because the eye relief is incredible, but I can clearly see the target and the dot without any kind of corrected vision, which Again, if you go with a low power variable optic, you are gaining the same thing as a red dot, but then you can screen that thing out to eight power. So let's talk about this guy right here. It's on the website, kb32tech.com. Unfortunately, right now, it's out of stock, but if you click on the thing, I think they got a reminder deal. So get on over there and take a look at this. Uh, I think it's $479.99, but in the realm of First focal plane scopes, one to eight power in an optic like this. This thing's badass. Uh, let's see, versatile, low power variable optic for effectiveness at close range. Intelligent ACSS Raptor. This is the Raptor uh, reticle, which looks like that right there. You can see. Hold on. In any case, uh, the cool thing about it is, again, it is a first focal plane. So when you crank it down to uh, one, one power, you're going to see basically the red dot. You're going to see this center circle right here. Now, there's all kinds of cool things about this reticle that really make it uh, unique in that when you are got this thing out to 8 power, you can actually range targets utilizing these little center line brackets. This represents 18 inches. So uh, it's a really neat thing. There's not a lot to think about. So when I put it on... A rifle, it's a go rifle. It's it's something that I can't actually use in the heat of uh, you know engagement. Uh, let's see here the primary arms. Also, if you order this thing, you can get their their GLX scope mounts. I think for seventy nine dollars and free delivery. So we got a magnification one eight first focal plane objective lens twenty four millimeter. Eye relief is huge, especially on one power. You don't have to worry about losing or trying to adjust your head back and forth, which is the beauty of this guy. So we have uh, the cool thing. All right, so I'm just going to go over the important stuff. I don't care about a lot of this stuff, but the cool thing is uh, 0.2 MAOA adjustments on the red, on the turrets. That's incredible to me because a lot of times what happens, and going back to this thing, we'll run a squirrel. You get a, all the testing quality assurances. That's pretty cool. When we pull this bad boy out, one of the things, and I will tell you this, take your scope next time you got it. All right, and measure that bad boy, and let me know. Come on now. All right, my batteries are dead again. All right, so anyway, this thing is really, really hefty for its size. Uh, again, one of the best parts about this is you do have quarter MOA adjustments in this scope, which is huge in a, uh, a low-power variable optic. Even I think the Vortex razors are only a half inch. This is neat. Uh, it does come with a spare battery, but we'll get back to this. All right, here we go. Uh, windage elevation, 130 MOA. Uh, length is 1003. I don't care how long it is. Uh, another good thing about it is IP67, which means you can submerge this thing in a body of water, one meter deep, for 30 minutes. 
which is probably not something that you or myself are going to be doing. We're not operators. Uh, fully multi-coated lenses, nitrogen purge, flip-up caps included. We'll go ahead and get rid of these things. I've got a stack of these guys. I don't really keep caps on my scopes, but I'm look at that thing. Isn't it nice? It's very compact, uh, but I'm impressed with the weight. The glass in these things are pretty decent, if I may add. Uh, 6061 aluminum. It uses a CR2032 battery, what is included, and also lifetime warranty. All right, so what we got is that guy right there. There's a CR2032 battery. There is one in right here. Uh, the reticle. Reticle on this thing, we've got night vision, two levels of night vision, and you can bring this thing up to daytime, daylight brightness. The cool thing about the first focal plane optic, and we'll go through this in, in another thing. I'm, I'm, I'm getting back into the videos because I've just got to get my mind off the politics and get on board with doing what I do best, which is showing you guys some of these optics. But in any case, the nice thing is about a first focal plane scope is that reticle will always remain consistent with your target at distance. It's not like a uh, second plane or second focal plane scope where the reticle remains the same no matter where you have it. So if you've got this thing on one power, I don't know if I can make it show up. Uh, come on. Here we go. See that right there? All right, now let's do this. We're going to turn it on. It should be on its brightest. And you can see the reticle, reticle, right there. Uh, the cool thing about the reticle is that it is etched in the glass. So in the event that you lose, there we go, come on now, there you go. In the event that you lose battery power and you're doing some crazy stuff, uh, you won't have to worry about losing the reticle or the zero on this thing. Uh, let's do this. We're gonna talk about it from front, well, from the rear to the front. Okay, so first of all, we do have an adjustable diopter. Now, when I was telling you about how us old guys, uh, I like a variable uh, diopter because I can adjust it for my vision. And um, believe you me, I'm all the way out to there. Now, the cool thing is, and I want you guys to look at this, there is no movement in that diopter. You get some cheaper ones, UTG, some uh, Barska, whatever. Check that, because if you get any movement here, well, your scope is basically worthless. Because if you have to back it out that far, who knows what you're going to be shooting at or what the point of impact would be based on the reticle. I've had a bunch of scopes do that, but the smooth lineup right there. We do have the SLX right here, 18 by 24 first focal plane. On here, we do have the zoom ring. Now, check this thing out. Go ahead and back that up. There is uh, the ability to adjust this little lever right here from here to here to here to here. And the reason that's important is because if you're running, say, oh, I don't know, SCAR or an AR with a 45 degree optic over here, uh, a lot of times if you want to back that thing up, you have the availability, you can move it up, which will give you more room right here. One, two, eight. First focal plane. That's huge. 30 millimeter tube on this thing. I do like the knurling on the caps. You know, I got enough complaints right there. Uh, the brightness levels are uh, on the brightness turret level thingy right there with an indication off. There is no, uh, what do you call it? like the, uh, the GLX. There's not a shake awake on this guy. Uh, I can't wait till they come out with a, a platinum down the road that has shake awake, automatic turn off that kind of thing my platinum right now i keep batteries with me because i'm notorious for leaving that thing turned on uh so anyway you do have it threaded right here so you can do a flash kill grid thingy jigabob but i will tell you this right now i am looking forward to putting this on a rifle real soon uh we've got a couple of them in the build process and i've got an assortment of ones that i'm doing on a, a I know uh, kind of a what the plan, Plandemic build series where they're generic rifles, about as cheap as I can go with Bear Creek Arsenal. Uh, I'm also going with Gun Tech handguards, which, by the way, are awesome handguards for 70 to 80 bucks. Uh, and just a regular old, uh, I guess, a CMMG lower parts kits, Anderson lowers, that kind of thing. Uh, but they're going to be great rifles. 
I've also got another set of rifles that I've got in production right now that are upper end with, I like the UTG Pro hand guards made right there in Michigan, uh, along with a Ballistic Advantage barrels, which I was going to do a full-blown review on it, but the audio got screwed up on it. Uh, those barrels are bad to the bone. I bought the majority of those stuff off of Big Daddy Unlimited. You'll see a link on there. Guys, if you're into buying a bunch of stuff, yeah, go to KB32 TAC and look on that BDU uh, link on the uh, second page of the website. There's a, If you're into buying stuff, they got them in stock, and man, you can save a lot of money. All right. Anyway, I just wanted to go over some real quick features of this, this specific scope, the ECSS Raptor. When you get on to, uh, well, you don't have to worry about it because if you click on the link, it's going to take you there. Right now, again, like I said, they're out of stock. But I will tell you this. If I was going to build a rifle and I had the option of a red dot versus a low-power variable optic, I would go with this guy right here. Uh, this is going to make it happen. Unless you're planning on spending another five or six hundred bucks, uh, this is probably the best value for the money. I do like this it's Cyclops, you guys out there. And we're going to do some more stuff coming up with the uh, two power prism scopes. We've got a uh, three power prism, the five power prism. Got a lot of cool things coming in that we're getting ready to test. And I'm not just selling these guys right here. Believe it or not, Palmetto State Armory has got their own lineup of scopes, and we've got those. And we're going to be doing reviews on those later on. Anyway, with that being said, guys, if you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already done so. Support red, white, and blue. God bless America. God bless those men, women, in uniform 24-7 for our freedom. This freedom is not free. I might back this video up with a nice little political rant. Because YouTube, well, they do not like scopes. For some reason. I don't know why. It's good boy 32 I am out of here. Y'all be good. Say we are in Virginia. And, uh, you know, we're just trying to defend our home. So, we're going to gauge the 100-yard target right there. And we're going to engage the 200-yard target there. 300 yards. 400 yards. 500 yard of a hold top. Seems like we're running a little shy on the 5.56 five, or 55 grade. And I'm gonna hold top ahead for 600.